I'm on board of our Sirius 35TS. Um, I'm Thorsten Schmidt, I'm the um, owner of the Sirius company and um, it's my pleasure to show you around and uh, explain you a bit about the special features of this boat. Yes, being in the cockpit of the Zero 35 DS, the first feature which might stuck you as different to other boats is the wheel position. Um, the wheel position in this very moment is very far over to the side um, and it's quite a small wheel. Um, the good thing is on that um, we can sit out here um, on the combing and have the wheel just next to us can lean on the guardrail and while we are doing um, um, while we are moving the wheel as it's a small wheel we are not making this big movement with the big wheels and then just this small movement it's quite relaxed to sit here the special thing is um, we only have one wheel which is now on this side but this is of course not the only possibility um, we can count the wheel over so it's a little pedal where we step on and then we can bring the wheel into the middle position which brings it quite far up which is good for smaller persons um, they could even stand up here and have the wheel in front of them and it's very good for harboring especially if you're on a small crew if you do that with a small crew because um, the wheel is small and you can go next to it you can pass it very easy if you want to go to the spring ropes or have to work with ropes well and um, if a bit if a big cruise liner is going over to this way and um, it's going out of your vision you just turn the wheel over to the other side and sit over here and have a nice view under the sails or into your telltales or see the big cruise liner again on this side. Um, the cunting wheel system which is made by Jeffa Steering which are world leaders in um, steering systems um, is very reliable it is a very easy system a very simple system which is originally made for racing boats but have to be reliable we are building this since um, many many years without any problems um, the good thing on is it um, uh, you just get a free cockpit you don't you're not cluttered up with two wheels um, and and um, yes you take it just into the direction where you want to have it also in the harbor um, it's just out of your way and you have the free passageway to walk along here. We have a very deep down cockpit which is very low, very near to the waterline. Um, this is very important because in a big seaway if you're sitting deep down you're making only this movement instead of this movement. So you sit much more comfortable and um, you normally don't find that on other boats because they all have to have the aft cabins below we don't like aft cabins we think we have a, um, a better solution than an aft cabin especially because of the slapping water which you normally find there but you will find that a video on uh, when i show the um, um, the cabin under the saloon but having the low cockpit means we sit quite deep down and have a very high combing all the way around um, this is 45 centimeters going down to 40 centimeters wherever you sit you can lean back and um, can sit in the corners and have a very comfy um, sitting up here also which you don't find on any, any other boats nowadays you have curved seats so they follow the ergonomic shape and when you um, when the boat heels and you sit on them um, you're not um, nuggling on the flesh um, um, you're sitting actually rested with your backbone and can brace yourself um, very comfy here or very comfy here hold yourself um, steer position it's the same we have a little block in the middle here where you can can sit and brace yourself um, when you're sitting up here with the wheel You can brace yourself on here or on the curve of the seat in the back and, um, and this is a bit sloped so you sit very comfy here as well. The cockpit of the um, 35TS is 2.02 meters long so everybody can lay outstretched here. The benches are 50 centimeters so this is a comfy place um, to lay down. Um, the good thing because we have the cunting wheel we don't need two wheels which are in your way and we don't have the big wheel um, which is in your way. Both benches on both sides are continuous. Um, a cockpit can either be 75 centimeters like on our 31 
O, where you can brace yourself on the opposite position, or it must be 1.15 meter um, to get a bracing position in the middle, um, what we have here um, in any position where you can sit down. Um, a feature which, again, you don't find on many other boats today anymore are the cubby holes. Um, we have three of them here, so you can get rid of your winch handles, get your sun cream. Um, the big one down there even take water bottles, binoculars, um, rubber boots, um, big things you might want to store there. Um, storage is another big point um, for the cockpit here because we don't like aft cabins. We have two very huge um, cockpit lockers here. Um, when you open the cockpit lockers, you can grab the lid literally everywhere. And you're always, when you're closing it, um, you're always with your fingers out of the danger zone um, because we don't have this little hook here in the middle and the little curving which you find on other boats. You secure the cockpit locker up here and then you find in your cockpit locker on this side um, uh, a very nice organization or very nice organization tools. Um, you have the have a big board um, with um, plastic boxes where you have your ropes and spare parts and winch handles and cleaning tools and you have lots of hangers for um, the ropes and the fenders to dry things they're quite deep. So uh, gas box is down here, um, takes two big five kilo bottles. So on the starboard side we have another very deep cockpit locker um, which contains a dinghy at the moment. You can have your outboard engine in there or three or four folding bikes and there's a dedicated place for the cockpit table um, which just sticks in here and it's easy to grab. So here's a small table in the cockpit which is always there, which makes a good handhold here and where you can lay small things or send up your grasses. Um, but we have of course a big cockpit table as well. Um, this lifts in the cockpit locker here. So you just take that out. And you see this is a very simple system. There's nothing big on it. You just put it behind this here and then it's very solid. You could actually sit on it and you can fold it out and make a big cockpit table where you can sit comfy with four persons. Well, if you want to leave the cockpit, um, you just cut the wheel over to the side and have a free entrance way here. And um, then you can take this out here and can open a real door. So actually when you leave the cockpit, you can go level out to the bathing platform and uh, can come level in. You don't have to climb over it. The bathing platform uh, has a bathing ladder which is in a drawer in the hull, so it doesn't take up any space here. You just draw her out and put her down to go into the water. But this is really easy access into the cockpit when you're going back to in the harbor. So in the back here we have another box which is dedicated for the life raft. Um, the whole lid comes away and um, then you have a storage place for your life raft. It did not have to be a container, it could also be a normal bag. And you find the attachment point for the um, emergency tiller here as well. So the whole cockpit of our Zero 35DS is designed um, for single hand sailing, which is a must if you're with a small crew or only two of you, because one of you can always be off watch, occupied with something else, or, um, or in the worst case you have to handle the boat yourself. So for that reason everything what you need at the helmsman position is already there. You have your engine control, the main sheet is just set up here, um, uh, and for nothing else you have to leave the cockpit. The general winches are quite far back and all other controls end up here on the top. On this boat, this is an electric winch, um, which operates literally everything, your self-tacking jab sheet, your reefs, um, the halyards, uh, even in case you have to bring somebody back on board, um, uh, that's all, um, oper uh, all operated from the top here, from this one side. Um, to have everything clear and um, organized in the cockpit is um, something of security as well. So you have a big halyard box here which takes all your lines um, in here. When you 
um, are in the cockpit you're very sheltered because it's a very deep and totally enclosed cockpit um, you have um, lots of positions where you can click in your life belts and the life line is running along the mid middle line of the boat which is also very important because when you're here you can click yourself in while in the cockpit and then you start to go around and this line which is attached in the middle of the boat always keeps you on board and is not dragging you around. As soon as you leave the cockpit um, you have very good handhold because of the high coach roof so it's just in the very position where you want to be and most of our boats are fitted with the solid guardrails which gives you the possibility actually to stand on them <laughs> or to sit on them but you can really lean and rely on them they hold you on board. If you come to the front deck of the Series 35 TS, um, you um, can brace yourself again very good on the solid guardrail. Um, but as this might be um, a bit tricky when you are on a seaway, in a seaway, we have the guardrails which are raised up to 120 millimeters in the front. So you can literally walk in the guardrail um, when you have to come forward when the boat heals. Um, the bowsprit which you find on this boat here, um, carries the self-tacking jib and the big jenny, um, always at hand, and also makes the boat a bit wider in the front, so you can walk next to the, um, uh, to the um, uh, furthest, and you can open the pulpit um, if you want to go down the steps um, out here. You don't have to do that from up here. You can just open that and go down here. Then we have a deep um, anchor box and anchor storage here. You see the whole deck is uncluttered, there's no winch on deck. This all lifts under here, here in the front, which is not only an anchor locker. Um, you have the big anchor winch down here and a chain box which is big enough for 200 meters of chain if you need that or if you want to have that. But you could also um, have your fenders and your ropes, your wet ropes in here, so you don't need to have that in the um, cockpit locker in the back. And this stays all clean under the deck, so you're not tipping over it and no sheets um, um, hang around the winch, so it's a very clean deck. On the roof, we don't need a spray hood um, because we have the lip of the roof here which is catching all the water which might come over the deck um, and you stay very well protected um, behind the deck's house. So we have all the space to mount solar panels um, on this boat here only on a garage but you can also equip your boat over there and then you will be really independent just on solar panels um, depending on your power consumption of course. <laughs> so um, again the roof gives you very good handhold in the right position and also if you want to enter up here it's just an easy step. Um, you can walk and stand on a solar panel, they are made for that and this is just the right height to work on a sail up here. To understand our Sirius Dexalum concept um, it's very important to talk about eye levels. The whole construction of the boat is set up around eye levels. That's very important because um, it's all about the visibility. So if you're standing in the cockpit um, you have a very clear look over the coach roof. This is only 1.4 meters, so literally everybody can look over there. Um, if you're sitting at the helm um, and sitting up here on the combing, then you have again the visibility over the coach roof and sidewards alongside of it. But if you're sitting down here in the cockpit, on the comfortable benches, you have a perfect visibility through the windows like you would normally look through a spray hot but in this case this is security glass so it gives you a much better vision than the normal stuff which you find in spray hots. So if we are going down into the saloon we're actually not really going down we are not limber dancing down eight steps um, into uh, a companion way we're just making one step over the sill and just entering the saloon and sitting down in a settee so being in saloon yes, is all about visibility. The basic idea of this concept is that um, most sailors like nature, so you might want to see it. We have in all the areas which you want to use over a day of what is important, so everything without the cabins and without the shower cabin and the toilet, um, you have the big windows all the way around. So 
if you're in a galley, if you're at the Hemsman station, or if you're sitting up in a saloon here, you always can look out of the windows. And this is so very important um, and it will change your kind of sailing as well. So if you have competition around, you might be out and tweaking on your sails. But not everybody is a keen sailor and not all the family um, love sailing, as, same as the skipper probably. So one might sit in here after one and a half hour and just sit on cushions, sit out of the sun, out of the wind, out of the weather and even on the passage. Um, this is just such a lovely place to see the miles unfold um, and um, enjoy the inside of the saloon even while sailing. But also if you're on an anchorage like we at the very moment or dried out somewhere or um, in a harbour on a rainy day, you enjoy the inside here like a holiday cottage. Um, you can actually do the same what you would do when you're at home because you have the big windows around and it's all pleasant and even if the weather's not that fair inside there's always something to see and that is the main point of the concept in a Sirius 35 DS here. So um, the settee here is a real U settee because the entrance is offset. Um, that gives you the possibility to sit opposite to each other. Um, you seat comfy five to six people here. Um, uh, you have um, a big table which can go down to make another bed if you want to have a double bed um, here. But you have also a very nice single bed. If you take off the cushions, um, there's a lee cloth living under here which you can which you can um, uh, uh, put between the benches here which keeps you in here. Um, I'm using that quite often if I'm single-handed and even if I have to have a little nap over day um, I just pop down here put my handy on, um, uh, on 25 minutes and when it bells I just get up and have a look out and if everything clear I have the next 25 minutes um, but it makes a very very comfy pilot berth up here if you're on watch. So directly opposite of the um, uh, big seti, um, on the same level, you find the interior steering position and the chart table. Um, again, we're just one stop away from the cockpit. We have the big glass hatch above us where we can see the sails and uh, the wind indicator. And we have the full visibility all the way around. So the navigation seat goes 40 centimeter up and down. So you can bring yourself into your navigation position. Um, here you will have your map in front of you, your plotter, your electronic and the um, fly-by-wire um, steering can be taken away. And um, under here you find um, a space for your charts in here and we have a red and white switchable light which you can also dim down um, to have to stay in your night vision. So even if you're sitting down here you still have the perfect view um, out of the windows and you stay very connected to the cockpit, to the crew in the cockpit but if you bring the seat up again um, you have the perfect 360 degree view um, all around and you can steer your boat safely um, from being in here. So if you step further forward um, you will find yourself in the galley and again visibility and eye level. If I'm standing up in the galley here, somebody sitting in a saloon, um, somebody sitting at the interior steering or out in the cockpit, you're always on the same eye level and around this eye level the big windows are placed. So even if you are in charge of the, um, of the um, cooking, um, uh, you don't, you're not cast away. You stay up here and it's very social because you're together with your guests and it's very short ways um, over to the table and, um, uh, and you have all the visibility. So standing in a galley, even on a seaway, on a sea passage, you have very good handhold because you have lots of possibilities to brace yourself and the very good thing it's not a huge open room so you can even you can slide through here on either tack on this side or on this side and um, and have a good bracing position everywhere here. But the galley itself um, it's a very nice fit out so you have um, your hops down here with the oven underneath and the double sink um, lots of storage behind and um, and then we find lots of drawers so have a look to all the drawers here um, stuff for the galley also stuff for the helmsman position here they're all self-closing even if you jam them through or they're jammed through they will close very soft you find more storage here more storage here and always quite a surprise 
deep storage below the floorboards here. So everything beneath here is very very easy accessible so you don't need to get all your guests up to get to the next bottle of wine um, you find them directly here um, and they stay nicely cooled because this is all below the water line and it is where you want to have the weight um, you can stuff lots of food in here and lots of things in here it also goes around the corner here and more storage behind there as well so see the lids they close relatively soft and they stand upright so they're not falling around and emergency supply is just there yes in the entrance area you find more drawers um, one down here for things easy to grab a very big one under here and more storage down here the bins and deep storage around here then quite important directly at the entrance um, behind the nav station you will find the oil skin locker um, this locker goes all the way in to the hull so up to here <laughs> and it takes the oilies of at least um, six to eight um, crew and you also get your life jackets, your rubber boots, everything down there and that is really directly at the entrance, so you're not dripping the things through the boat. It's heated by the engine, vented to three sides, um, so this all um, stays dry and warm. Actually, you're not using it very much, um, because when it starts raining you usually close the hatch and go inside. So, opposite of the navigation station we have a hidden room. Um, it's actually a workshop. You think I'm kidding? Have a look yourself. You just hold this up here. So you can step down into the man cave. Um, <laughs> honestly, um, this is a very nice utility room. Um, you have a workbench here, a Weiss, and you have all your electrics, um, all your tools, all your spare parts here. You find drawers, um, extra storage space, and a direct way to the engine. The engine is built in as the last step of production so when everything is finished and varnished we just get it down here and slide it backwards so in case it should come out again that's very easily done um, everything which needs access on the engine is just in front of you here you find the belt um, you find the impeller pump um, water oil everything around um, you can access the engine um, from all the sides as well so there's a big panel which can be removed here and the big panels from the cockpit lockers and from the back. You have your filters, fuel filters, directly down here, very nice, accessible. And um, you have lots of extra space to retrofit things. Um, here's space for washing machine um, and uh, water maker or generator or all other things you might think of retrofitting later on. Also, um, with the toolbox down here and the big drawer here, um, you have a dedicated room for all your tools and all your spares. They are not lying between tomatoes and potatoes um, and you don't have to open the whole of the boat um, if you do any service. It's just all down here. Because of the raised saloon, we have to totally different possibilities for the interior of the rest of the boat. Um, in fact, this boat has about six feet more internal space than you would judge from the outside dimensions. Um, the reason is we are using the widest part of the boat on about three and a half meter entirely double. You've already seen the deep storage um, under the saloon. Um, and um, we have something very special down here, so if you like to follow me. Welcome to the owner's cabin of the Zero 35 TS. Um, have a look to this room. This is not only a sleeping room, not only a bed. Um, you have a bed of 2.05 meters to 1.6 meter wide without narrowing to the end, um, with lots of room above. But um, it is actually an extra room, an extra little saloon, um, where you can at least have a hideaway and can sit out of the way of the others um, uh, for two hours, close the door. Um, you're not feeling claustrophobic because you have the big hatch, um, the windows, and the windows, the view um, out to the water. 
Um, this cabin is centered in the very, very center of the boat. This is where Alan MacArthur would sleep on a circumnavigation because here you have no movement. It's just in the gravity center of the boat, just above the keel, in the very middle of the boat. No slamming water like you're used from aft cabins, no rattling chain like in the back, and you can have a lee cloth um, rigged up in between here, so that makes a perfect sea berth. Other than that, you have a big drawer under here, a big cupboard and the door to the ensuite toilets. The ensuite hats are also typical for serious luxury styles with lots of light and a very nice room in here. Um, lots of choices and customization possibilities for the wash basins. Uh, could be more sea wozy boy, higher tub, it could be electric toilet. Um, you don't get a shower in here because we have a separate shower cabin um, which makes the usability of these rooms much much better. Um, you also got lots of cupboards um, which are normally on other boats taken by the space for the um, septic tank. We have a big septic tank in front here which 140 liters um, so we've all the space here for cupboards where you want to have them. You sit also very near to the center of the boat so you have relatively little motion and you can brace yourself in a sea way. You sit facing backwards and um, yeah it makes a very nice combination of style and usability. But one of the nicest um, uh, features of design here is um, uh, this hats are ensued for both of the cabins. So whether you're coming from the front cabin or from the owner's cabin, you have your own separate entrance into the hats and of course can lock the doors to the other side so you don't need to go through the open space in your night ground if you go to the toilet at night. In the front of the boat you find another owner's cabin. It's actually a very spacious room. Um, you have lots of lights with the hatches and the windows, um, lots of room to move around and it's a very luxurious bed so it's actually difficult to decide. Um, you've seen the uh, owner's cabin before. Um, some people use this as an owner's cabin, which means if you have your mother-in-law or good friends on board, you don't have to move out your own cabin to leave them the good cabin. Um, they're actually equal. Um, on both cabins you have the end suite toilet rooms and hats and this cabin have lots of space. You have a place to sit to put your socks and feet on. Um, you have a big cupboard and you have huge drawers under here. They are 70 centimeters deep and are much nicer to organize than cupboards. On the starboard side, opposite uh, of the hats and the owner's cabin, you have a separate shower cabin. I guess this is the only way to use a shower on board really properly on a daily basis, um, because while you, both of you are getting up, one can use the hats and the other one can use the shower. This is a total enclosed um, GRP structure, um, so it's very easy to clean. You have full standing height up here, um, but you might also like to sit down and make good use of the space here as well. Um, the funny thing might is, might might um, appear to you, uh, what the door we have opened um, in the first place is, it looks like the shower cabin door, but it really is the front cabin door. Um, this is just a storage space for the front cabin door, because doors get in your way over day and you want to have the ventilation area. The real shower cabin door is the one inside here, and this closes this direction, and it's held by magnets. So. After taking a shower, you just open the hatch and after about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the wind, it's all dry in here and it's very, very little maintenance to clean it. So welcome on board of our Zerius 35DS. Um, I'm going to show you and explain you a bit about the maneuverability of this boat. Um, there are some similarities uh, to other boats, um, like um, the position of the rudder, which is about here. And um, then you need about 40 centimeter of rudder technique. Well, and then came the differences to other boats. On other boats, you then will have about two meter aft cabin. We don't like aft cabin and think we have a nicer solution. And for that reason, we could place the engine just here, which makes the sail drive about here and the propeller here. This is a distance of about uh, 50 centimeters to the rudder. Uh, we have a half skeg rudder, so the um, main impact of the um, engine water is on the top section of the rudder where the half skeg is protecting it. And um, together with the big rudder we have, that gives you a kind of a back thruster, which you don't see, don't pay for, no power consumption. You can just bring the boat into the direction where you want to go to by turning the rudder over to one side 
and giving a little prop wash and you see what's happened the boat just goes sideways into the direction where you have the rudder turned. The important thing is we are not talking of prop walk. It's not the direction where the propeller walks to. It is the direction where the water from the propeller is pressing against the rudder and is pressing us to the side. So in difference to prop walk, you can use this prop wash in any direction you want and as hard as you want it and as hard as you need it. Which means if I want to go over to this side, I'm just turning the rudder over to the other side. Now it stands like this and when I give a bit of forward throttle the water is pressing against the rudder on this side and will kick the back of the boat over to this side. See what's happened? I'm just giving a little wash, going slightly into reverse and you see how the boat walks over to this side and you can maneuver her with a little training on about seven to eight centimeter. If you're too near to this side there, you just turn the rudder over to the other side, give it a little wash and you bring her away from here. And um, you can do that as often as you like. So just a little forward wash and the boat, the back of the boat will be taken over to this side. In combination with the deep forefoot, which makes the boat stick deeper into the water, uh, you're not blown away in the harbor very much. So, um, and with the maneuverability in the back, which you might combine with a boat twister, um, you can keep the boat always under control and can always bring her directly into the spot where you want to have her. So, as I said, with very little training, you can maneuver her on about seven to eight centimeters onto the spot where you want to have her. So again, we're quite near here. So if that is too near, we just turn the rudder over to this side and give it a little wash. And we will bring the boat away over to this side. But on the other hand, with very little training, you can maneuver the boat on about seven to eight centimeters onto the distance where you want to have her. So have a look. I'm just going sidewards around here. Have a look to the flag stuff. You just turn her on a spot. And you might turn her back into the other direction. Same maneuverability as we are not talking of a prop walk, which only works into one direction, but of a prop wash. And you see this is not, it's not any, um, it's not rocket science. I'm doing nothing with the rudder actually, I've just have it over to one side and I'm giving a little forward throttle and that brings the boat over to this side. You can do that even in fast, fast motion. If you give a bit of a, if you give her more wash, she comes over much, much faster. And you might turn her on the spot. We are not only talking about a very good prop wash on a rudder, but also of a very big rudder. Which means, um, even by just turning the rudder, um, we can bring the boat very hard over and very fast over. Um, if I'm coming into the harbor and want to go backwards in there, I'm just turning the rudder around. Um, and if I go in the very moment where I go into backwards, the boat continues the turn, which I've had started. And then I can move backwards into the bay where I want to go to. Um, the big rudder helps also by going backwards. Um, like any other boat you need a bit of speed to come into the direction where you want to go to but the prop wash brings you in the position that you can steer the boat over to the other side. So I'm not gi now giving a bit of rudder, a bit of wash and you see how the boat is kicked on the back over to the other side and if that is still too near I'm just doing it again. A bit of rudder, a bit of wash on the rudder and the boat turns on the very spot and you can bring her over to the side where you want to have her. That makes harboring very, very easy. 
say um, if we want to go over to this cleat and this is too far away, we just get her over to there like this. And if you now have a boat next to you and want to go over to this side, you just turn the rudder over to the other side, give it a wash, and the back of the boat is moving over to this side. And if the other jetty is too near, just do it again, little wash. And you can hold her in the back where you want to have her. In the front, she's quite steady because she sticks deep into the water and is not blown away by the wind so easy. But of course, you can have a boat thruster to make that easy in the front as well. So if you go backwards, it's like on any other boat, you need slightly a little bit of speed to, to um, get maneuverability. But because we have a big rudder, um, you can steer her very soon, very directly into the direction where you want to have her. Let's say you have to go a long way and uh, don't like to stand like this. The cunting wheel comes in very handy because you can cunt it over to the side and stand in front of the wheel like you would do driving a car. <laughs> and um, facing into backwards direction if you throttle directly next to you and um, do your lung passage backwards driving into the harbor. So if you find yourself in a bay and you find another boat in front of you and you have to turn around and go out again, you know you have a big rudder. So you can even with some speed turn the rudder totally over to one side. The boat will start turning immediately. And as soon as you go into backwards, slightly into backwards, she continues to turn. And you use your prop wash next, just by having the rudder over to this side. We have about two and a half to three meters more space than the boat length here between these boats. Um, so I'm going to use this space. Going backwards until I haven't room anymore. And then I'm turning the rudder over to the other side and using my prop wash to turn the boat on the very spot. Going into reverse again. Doing that again. If you find yourself um, going into a tiny area where you find no place to go, so you have to go out again, you know you, can, you have a big rudder to rely on, so you simply turn the rudder totally over to one side, go into reverse and see what's happened. The boat is turning on her heels or you might say on her keels because it's a twin keel or like the English say on a sixpence. So, um, and the boat continues the movement. You can steer backwards, of course, if you want, but you know you have a big prop wash. So you just turn the rudder over to this side, give a wash, and she turns on the very spot where she is. And you can go out of, out of the bay again. This is actually at the very moment turning against the wind even. So the bow is being slightly dragged over from the wind to this side. So I'm using my big rudder now to go backwards and bring her over to this side. And using the space I have. And when I go forward again, I'm using the prop wash and turn the boat on the very spot and we've done a 360 in a quite narrow area here without being washed away to one or the other side. 
thank you for watching um, the video. If you like to have more information, just give us a call or send us an email. You find more pictures and lots of more things to explore on our website at www.sirius-werft.de. That's w -E -R -F -T .de. Bye.